just as I am, love tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and the tears within. Just as I am, thou will receive, will welcome, pardon, and cleanse and relieve, because thy promise. And thank you for that beautiful music. I think we have a video real quick. You've landed at Trinity United Methodist Church. Nah, I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You wanna borrow the new car? You wanna borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy, super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey! Hey! Can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Hmm, vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Yeah, the things dads never say. Happy Father's Day. Um, what a blessing it is. It's so good to see many, many godly men here. And I know there's many godly men online watching as well. I thank you for all that you've done, all the work that you're doing, and all the work that you will continue to do to raise up um, children, to raise up the neighbor's children, to raise up neighbor, uh, nieces and nephews. What a blessing that is. Let the, I love it when those little ones laugh, so let them laugh. It's all good. Um, tr again, Trinity United Methodist Church, Fort Dodge, Iowa, thank you for being here. Thank you for being online. If you're online, please say good morning so I know you're with us. 
And if you want to get started on um, the joys and the concerns or the glimpses of God's goodness, God's grace, feel free to start typing those in. We have a few announcements. I have a bulletin. One of the few. Um, we have Bible study on Monday night. The book of, we're studying the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. Tuesday morning we have quilters. <laughs> Um, on Wednesday, we have coffee with friends at 9.30. Come and join us. If you're not sure who's, who's going to be here, then bring a friend. That way you know you'll have somebody to talk to. On Wednesday night, we have um, all things water. So it is a BYOT party. That means bring your own towel. <laughs> If you, yeah, bring your own towel. If you're not sure what this means, just come anyway. We'll take care of you. I can't guarantee you'll be dry, but I, I we'll take care of you. On Thursday morning, we have another Bible study. It is 1 Corinthians. Um, back to worship. And then next Sunday is the 27th. We will have uh, another caring ministry training event from 1 to 3. I hope you can join with that. It, last, last week's was pretty fun. And um, I'm sure this week we'll, we'll learn a lot and have some fun, great snacks as well. I did say great snacks as well. Um, we have vacation uh, training, vacation Bible school um, leadership training. That'll be on June 30th at 7 o'clock. Um, we're, we get to hear um, some of the ideas, some of the great ideas from Laura Stober. Uh, vacation Bible school this year will be on Wednesday nights from 4 to 5.30. And it's just a let's go kind of theme. So we're going to go fish, go follow, go serve, go share. It's, it's really about our families and supporting our families. So it's not just send your kid, take an hour off. Um, it's about the families coming together and doing things together. Um, so that's pretty cool. June 30th through May or through August 1st is um, our our training or fun for the kids uh, mission trip. We had initially planned to go to the Ark uh, the following week, and that was not a good week to pick for them. So we're going to take three days and we're going to go to Branson, Missouri. Anybody been to Branson, Missouri? Anybody ever go see the Sight and Sound Theater? Anybody ever see Jesus? Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah, we're going to um, take the kids to go see Jesus at the Sight and Sound Theater. Um, we may need some chaperones, so see Laura Stover. <laughs> My goal is not to have the uh, adults outnumber the kids, but if, it's, <laughs> if that happens, it's okay. The kids will just have to learn it's okay to hang out with adults. It's so funny. Um, let's see, where am I at? Uh, Rag Bri is July 26th. Um, we're serving lasagna here at the church. Um, so if you haven't signed up to help with that, um, give a call to the office. I think uh, Karen Hillpiper is coordinating the, the food itself. So call Karen, tell her you want to help. Um, it'll be a great time. It'll be a wonderful time to see so many people coming into our facility, into our community, and the hospitality that we will be showing. What a blessing that'll be. August 5th and 6th is our rummage sale. Bring your treasures now. Um, we're putting them in that first classroom um, as you come in from the south. And um, I don't know where they go from there, honestly. But bring your treasures and we'll make sure we um, sell them to somebody else who, who's, who will love them just like you did. The, graduate, the confirmation kickoff will be in August. We think it's the 18th. We're not sure. We need to check it, schedules of our 7th and 8th graders. Um, and I think that's about it. Praise Fest is August 14th. I don't know any more than that. Um, we will receive new members July 10th and July, July 11th. At least that's what's on my schedule. If you are not a member and would like to become a member, please give me a call. Um, uh, we'll walk through what that means and get you on that list. Um, is there anything else that's going on? Outreach, yes, I missed that. I thought about it at 11.30 last night and cho chose not to come back and add it. I'm sorry. <laughs> to outreach meets tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Yes, thank you. And um, to all the dads, to all the men, there are keychains in the back. They have a little baseball and a bat. That was um, Mike Shelton's idea. We want to honor all gods and you get, or all guys. Um, you are a home run in our eyes and in God's eyes as well. Um, anything else going on? Well, then let's pray. 
Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day and for all the blessings that it holds. Lord, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us, to guide us. Lord, we give you thanks for that beautiful rain this morning. Lord, we could use a little more, but you already know that. Um, see that as a plea and as a cry, not as an advisory. But Lord, we just say thank you for all the work that you do in us and through us. We thank you for the many blessings that we receive, those that we notice and those that go unnoticed. We know that you are at work all the time. How cool that is. Lord, send the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us, to guide us. May all that we sing, all that we say, all that we pray, all that we do, bring honor and glory to you. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Would you join me in the responsive reading? When the waves of doubt threatens us, God is with us. When fears seem to swamp our lives, God is with us. Rejoice, we are loved. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I was just reading the big print. Awake, God is here. Rejoice, we are loved. Get ready, there is much to be done. Amen. Our opening song is hymn number 377, It Is Well With My Soul. If you want to stand, stretch those legs. If you're able, if not, sit with gusto. 377, we're going to sing two verses. You may be seated. Um, this morning we're moving uh, disciples, the young disciples time to now because we have children's church after the children's message. So um, do we have any young disciples who would like to come chat?
Good morning. How are you all? Good. All right. One of my most favorite stories of the Bible we're going to act out this morning. And yes, you all get to help. And yes, you all get to help. It is a little shepherd boy named David. And he got himself in an interesting situation. He had to go up against a really big guy. Do you remember what that big guy's name is? Lenny? Goliath. That's right. Guess who's going to be playing the little shepherd boy? Somebody related to you. Come on down, David. <laughs> now, David was a shepherd boy. And so he had to have a handy dandy, really great looking slingshot, right? Because he would fight off any kind of animal that would try to hurt his sheep. It was his job to protect the sheep. That was a very important job. And oftentimes he had a little walking stick with him as well because it would help him guide the sheep and, you know, fend off those crazy animals, right? Oh, fend off me <laughs> from talking him into doing stuff. <laughs> so he's playing the role of David. Nice guy, right? Should we cheer for him, do you think? Yes, we want him to be a winner, right? Now, that's what you have right in your hand. All of you and all of you are going to be the Israelites. So you're Team David. Now, you're going to have some important things to say and do. And it may feel like when we start out that the story's not going very well for David. But we're going to hang in there and see what happens at the end. So it's sort of the, the beginning, everybody that's an Israelite, you, you're a little scared. You're scared for David. So you're going to pretend to chew on your fingers. Can everybody do that? You're nervous. Can we do that? Come on, put your fingers up here and pretend. And then your knees, your knees are shaking a little bit. Can you shake your knees? Okay, you don't have to stand up to do it. Just shake your knees right where you are. Okay, it's kind of cool new dance moves we're doing up here. All right, now, we do have to have another person in this story because it makes it more dramatic if we really do have a Goliath, come on down. Oh, look, he got talked into it. <laughs> Woo, woo, woo. Let's, let's give it up for Goliath. In fact, Israelite team, here we go. If you're sitting anywhere that I hand you a pom-pom, it's your job now. You're going to be part of his cheering team. Even if you don't care, well, don't think about who's playing the part. Just, <laughs> let's just, we're going to cheer him on. Okay, so he's the head guy for the Philistines. All right, here we are, everybody. You are the Philistines. Who are you guys over there? Oh, good. You got your parts right. Okay. Philistines, we are cheering for the main man right up here. So many times throughout the story, oh, this is even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> We're going to be saying, Goliath, Goliath, he's your man. If he can't do it, no one can. Think you can do that with me? All right, here we go. Goliath, Goliath, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. That's a lot of resting on you, yes. All right, now, who do you think needs the microphone more? Which one of these? Oh, I can put you Okay, then I'll just set this down. <laughs> do you want to test or are you good? Okay, all right. All right. Do you want him to have one? Do you want him? Oh, I don't have You don't have another hand. You, no. you and Archie are a lot alike. <laughs> okay, well, then we begin. All right, you guys get ready. Remember, we're team David. Woo, okay. Long ago, the Israelites gathered to fight against the mighty Philistine warriors. Ready, everyone? Go on! Go on! Go on. He beats our men. Well, if nothing else, they can, they're pretty good cheerleaders. <laughs> anyway, the Israelites were on one hill and the Philistines were on another. Every day, the biggest, strongest, nastiest smelling Philistine of all. <laughs> I didn't write this. <laughs> A giant named Goliath mocked the Israelites and their God. You measly little worms! 
I could fight your whole army with my pinky finger. You were a wimp. Uh, you served. You served a wimpy king and a wimpy god. And you're all a bunch of chickens. Israelites were terrified. Every morning and every evening for 40 days, the giant would laugh at the Israelites. <laughs> now I'm afraid. <laughs> the Israelites would shake on the hill, scared to death. While the Philistines cheer down their hero. One day, a young shepherd boy named David was sent by his father to take some food to his brothers who were fighting in the war. But when David arrived, he didn't see anyone fighting at all. What's going on here? I thought you were supposed to be fat. Fighting the Philistines. Wait, did we forget something? Wait, we're supposed to be scared. Okay, <laughs> okay now we're ready. Okay. Everybody, oh, what are we going to say, Israelites? No, no way! Holy day! Now we're ready. Come on, man! He can't do it! Nobody can! Well, then I'll fight him. I'm not afraid of anyone as long as God is on my side. All right, here we go, everybody. We're going to rescue him right now. Ready? We're all going to say, David, David, he's our man. If he can't do it, we're all dead meat. <laughs> Shake your pom-poms. Yeah, okay, we're cheering for him. We're believing in him. Yes. The king wished David the best. And David, armed with only a slingshot okay. and a big stick, Approached the giant. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what do I look like? A doggy? <laughs> that you come at me with a stick? Here, fetch. Over. <laughs> I'm gonna step all over you. Prepare to be toe jam. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance, Goliath. You see, my God is a lot bigger than you. Today, everyone is going to find out just how powerful he is when I cut you down to size. The trash talking continued. <laughs> David ran toward David ran toward the giant and slung a stone at him. Ouch! <laughs> it hit the giant in the forehead, maybe twice, <laughs> and knocked him to the ground. Then David took Goliath's own spear. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah. <laughs> the Philistines saw it and were so scared they ran for their lives. Here we go, everybody. Goliath! Goliath! He's our man. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Being chased by the now brave Israelites. All right, all of you right now stand up with me, okay? And from... David's the winner, right? And let's put our muscles up. Yay! Everybody, all the Israelites, yay! Woohoo! And from then on, everyone knew that the God of the Israelites was for real.
Our next scripture comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Any volunteers for this one? Just joking. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept the marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us, and no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry, angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. We serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, but they call us imposters. We are ignored even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are pure, but we have spiritual riches to others. We own nothing and yet have everything. Oh, dear Corinthian friends, we have spoken honestly with you, and our hearts are open to you. There is no lack of love on your, our part, but you have withheld your love from us. I am asking you to respond if you were my own children, as if you were my own children. Open your hearts to us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be God. Special music this morning is Katrina. Thank you for playing. Last night we had a conversation. Um, Katrina came in and said, I think everybody's going to be disappointed. They're expecting Brady. I said, I'm going to remind them that you gave him life <laughs> and that you paid for his lessons. You're just as good. Thank you.
Thanks for, thank you. That's beautiful. We have such talent, don't we? We, we come to the time where we get to talk about uh, glory sightings. You know, as a member of the church, we say we're going to support our church through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So now we get to practice what it means to witness to Christ or to God's work. So any glimpses of God's goodness or God's grace? Rain, absolutely. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. It is a real blessing for the farmers, for everybody, indeed. Absolutely, absolutely. Any other glimpses of God's handiwork? You know, your neighbor coming and mowing your lawn yesterday. That's wonderful. What a blessing. Kathy. Kathy. Kathy Miller Olson is home from her stem cell transplant and doing well. Yes, that's a glimpse of God's goodness. Any others? Stop. God has blessed Val and Brad with 51 years of marriage what a, today. Thank you for that great example. Any other glimpses of God's handiwork? I'm sorry, Leanne. So, Leanne and, and LJ had the privilege of um, seeing Katrina as a young girl um, jumping off the school bus and running in to get lessons at their house. And whether she was witnessing to someone or, or sharing her gift of music, what joy that brings. Absolutely. And I, I know you opened your home to so many people, and what a blessing. You, you opened your home to Katrina as well. Thank you for that glimpse. Any other witnesses of what God has been doing? We were blessed with a healthy great-granddaughter last evening. Um, Aww. What was her name? <laughs> Lily Joanne Springer. Oh. A new great-granddaughter last night, Lily Joanne Springer. What a blessing. We pray that mom and, and the little one are doing well. Any others? Okay, how about prayers? Is there someone we need to be lifting up in prayer or something we need to pray about? Pray for more rain. Absolutely. Gracious Lord. Mark. Um, a couple ladies out at the campground that didn't have a tent and stayed there for a couple weeks. I don't I could never talk to them and find out what their story was, but they appeared to not have much and, and they've since moved on. Absolutely. Okay, um, there's a couple ladies that have been living out of a vehicle out at the campground. They've been out there for two weeks, and they've since been moved on. But whatever their story is, God knows. And Mark's tried to engage in conversation and just wants everybody to be praying for them. Wherever they're at, whatever their story is, pray for blessings to abound in their lives. Gracious Lord. Any others? I'd like prayers for my brother and his family as his wife is in her last days. Prayers for your brother and his wife. His wife is in her final days. OK, 
Okay, gracious Lord. For Elizabeth, Melissa Bristow, okay, a longtime educator, passed away suddenly um, from Fort Dodge. Gracious Lord. Okay, continued prayers for Jan Piercy, um, another trip to Mayo. Okay, gracious Lord. Let's go to our Lord in prayer, shall we? Mighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. Lord, what a privilege it is to be able to be a part of your world, to be in it, knowing that it's only temporary. Yeah, Lord, we're here to hear more about your word, to figure out where we fit in, and to figure out what it is you want us to do. How can we be a blessing to others, Lord? How can we be a blessing? Lord, you've called us, you've gathered us. We get to hear your word, we get to hear the stories of how you have been at work in the lives of, lives of a shepherd boy, in the lives of some older folks as well. Lord, what a privilege it is to hear those stories. Lord, I know that there's folks who are mourning and grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, I ask you to meet them in that grief. Don't leave them there. Help them to journey in it and through it. Lord, continue to lead them. Lord, may we see where you're at and follow you without question, without fear, but with courage taking one more step, putting one more foot in front of the other. Lord, I know that there's a lot of folks who are dealing with some health issues. Lord, you've heard some of them, but not all. Lord, you know who needs to be renewed and restored. You know who's hurting Lord, you know what's going on in our lives. So, Lord, I just ask you to reach out. I ask you to place your hand on them. Maybe they're even reaching for you at this very moment. But, Lord, I ask you to place your hand on them. Heal them. Help them to, to feel the best they can. If they can't be 100%, let them be 95. Lord, help them to feel the best they can so that they can get back to doing the things that you need them to do. The stuff that brings them joy, the stuff that helps others hear about your message, about your son. Lord, we come from great weeks, but maybe there's some who had even better weeks. Whatever kind of week we have, we come and lay it all down. We take some time to connect our hearts with yours. Lord, incline your ear to us and hear our prayer.
Lord, we give you thanks for hearing our prayers. We give you thanks for knowing our hearts. We give you thanks for moving us forward, granting us courage, helping us to be boldly proclaiming your love, telling others about what you've done in our lives. Lord, continue to stir our hearts, continue to work in us and through us. Help us to build this kingdom here on earth so that others might know you as well. Lord, we know that when Jesus came, he gathered those disciples one by one and said, come and follow me. And we saw, we saw some great work going on in them and with you. Lord, just as you called, they responded. Just as you responded in love, you granted them grace. You granted them peace. Even when they weren't sure it was available to them. Lord, we know that Jesus was there to teach the disciples. And one day, those disciples said, Lord, will you teach us to pray? And Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Our next hymn is hymn number 507, Through It All. 507, would you stand? Would you remain standing for the reading of the gospel lesson? This morning it's found in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. His disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the water, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man, they asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. So we continue in this sermon series of God at work. 
We talked about how God calls, and God calls in many ways, and we are each called. God responds. God's going to hear our cry, and God's going to do something. Maybe not in the way we think or in our time. We are not advisors to God. It's the other way around. But God does respond, and God sees. What a blessing that is that God sees what's going on in our lives. And today we get to talk about God leads just as God led David, that shepherd boy, to take on Goliath, God wants to lead each and every one of you. So as there were two armies, one on each hill, getting ready to do battle, one would serve the other. One would be a slave to the other. One would have an identity called winners, and the other would have the identity called losers. One had a bad guy called, a, well, he was a giant, but he was called Goliath. And the other one had a small boy named David. Who could possibly win? I, for 40 days and 40 nights, the, the people on those two hills kind of figured who was going to win. And they were taunting and teasing, mocking, and jeering. And the other group, they were in fear. I think they were also praying hoping that God would lead them out of their story, out of this story, and maybe even create a little of his story. So we know the end of the story. We know the end. We've had the benefit of over 2,000 years. But if you put on your first century sandals and you put yourself in the position of one team or the other, one hill or the other, you would feel very different about it. You would feel very different about what was going on day and night, night and day, 40 days, 40 nights, not knowing who was going to come to the aid of the Israelites to rise up against Goliath, knowing that Goliath had everything that mattered in the day. If you think about it, he physically strong, physical presence, tall, dark, maybe even handsome. He had the armor that would protect him. Age matters, size matters, strength matters, his physical abilities and appearance mattered. And then I stand here thinking, you know what? Those are the same characteristics Saul was looking for in last week's lesson, wasn't it? And I think the, those same characteristics are the things that we look for in today as well. We're looking for who's smart, who's strong, who's tall, dark, and handsome, who can get the job done. Well, I got to thinking when it comes to war, weapons matter, right? Goliath had a shield, he had a sword, he had a helmet, he had the armor. We didn't read the part about David being fitted with the king's armor and given the king's sword. And David said, no, I can't even take a step in all of that. Let me take what I know. Let me take a slingshot. The king said, take a stick too. Take my spear. Take, and David's like, I'll take my staff and I will take my God. If God is on my side, all is well. You know, God does matter. It's, the, it's not the physical presence. It's not the brains. It's not the brawn. It's, it's God. We need to hear time and time again how God matters, how God is going to make a difference, how God is going to do astonishing and amazing things. We've read about some of those stories in our scriptures. It wasn't too long ago, and we read about um, this baby born in a manger. He grew up to do some amazing things, did he not? He saved the people. I'm glad he listened. He taught the religious leaders in the temple. I'm glad he did. He even died on the cross. I'm glad he did. The things of God, the things that are of God, the things about God, the things that God stands for is what matters. Now, if you were this morning cheering for the underdog... You were cheering for the boy David. Thank you, Evan. That's awesome. How many of you cheer for underdogs on a regular basis? 
Yes. Thank you very much. Now, is it, I want to just ask, do you cheer for the underdog because you want to see things equal and just? Do you want to cheer for the underdog because you want to build their courage and their confidence? Or do you just want to see that big team being taken down? I think I know the answer. <laughs> um, for those who giggled, you might have something called the Schadenfreude disease. It's the idea that you want to see the big guys taken down. I didn't make that up, it really. It's Schadenfreude. Wanting to see the, the big guys taken out or taken down a peg or two. How many of you seen the movie, Rudy? How about Hoosiers? How about Karate Kid? How about Cinderella? Those are stories about it. Scott, you laugh. How many times have you seen Cinderella? <laughs> More than once. I got it. We won't, we won't put a number to it. Those are stories about the underdog and how we want to see victory come from those who are, have been oppressed, or those who have not had privilege, those who need a bit of a blessing from God. Those stories about underdogs, we want to see them win. We want to cheer them on, do we not? Yeah. We want the world to be just. We want others to be blessed. Our story today is a, is a new, fresh picture of how God works, how God will help a small boy find courage and be bold and stand up against the giant. It's about the faithfulness of David and it's about the great work of God. It's interesting that David said, if God is with me, David knows that it's important to let God lead. It's important for us to let God lead. So when you're thinking, is it ever going to rain? You might want to start looking for your umbrella. If you're taking that concern and that prayer to God, you definitely need your umbrella because you're letting God lead. Continue to ask God to lead you in all those tough situations. When you're crying out, say, Lord, it's okay if you lead. I'm going to wipe my tears. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to look for where you're moving, and I'm going to praise your name. You'll see those great results in a little boy, in that baby in a manger. Even the wind and the waves will be quieted. It's ever so important that we recognize where God is at work and we let God lead. May God continue to lead you throughout your days and do amazing things as well. Would you pray with me? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for the story of a small boy who wasn't afraid. He was empowered and emboldened by you. Lord, help us to see that power Help us to ask for that power. Help us to go out in confidence with that same power in knowing that you are with us. In fact, you are leading us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, no throwing rocks, okay? <laughs> Just dawned on me. Don't throw rocks. Um, if you're visiting with us, um, don't feel obligated to give. We do have an offering plate in the back. Um, and if you didn't bring a check, if you get home and you find out your check is still on the kitchen table, you can drop it off Monday through Friday mornings, 9 to 12. You can put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, address it to 838 North 25th Street, Fort Dodge, Iowa, 50501. Or you can set up an automatic gift or an automatic giving to the church. The phone number to the church office to make that happen is 515-573-3519. Let us give thanks for the gifts that we receive, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for the blessings of living out your stories or making your stories come alive today. Lord, we know that the, the disciples were afraid of the wind and the waves. Sometimes we are too. So Lord, help us to cry out to you. Help us to wake you up and say, Lord, don't you care? Well, mighty God, we know what it's like to be tossed about in the storm. We know that the faith we profess when days are calm and sunny 
is also challenged and shaky when the storm is furious and the water is swamping our boat. As we offer our gifts to you this day, they are given with the hope that we will be better able to let go of the world that tells us that there's a guarantee and that something else will give us security. May we find our hope and our assurance in the redeeming love. We, we share these gifts in the knowledge that there are other boats beside ours in the same storm. May they see hope. May they be encouraged. May they see the power of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Would you join me in our next hymn? It's hymn number 2021. What a mighty God we serve. 2021, would you stand? As the Lord has given to you such peace and healing, go into the world offering God's love and hope to others. Go in peace and remember that God goes with you. Amen. Our final song is 2214, Lead Me, Guide Me. 2214.